Shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe around, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Marco fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. This is the Ones Who Woke Up podcast. This is Joshua I've got with me. Eli Halpern. And you were saying that... I feel like I'm calling my bank. <laughs> yeah, what's your what's your mother's maiden name? Oh, <laughs> uh, not this time, internet. <laughs> but <laughs> everybody's been got at this point, bro. There's no shame in it. Yeah, my but, social's out there. But you were saying that uh, the government had made a bunch of fake uh, terrorist videos type shit? I would never say that. I love the government. And uh, please don't assassinate me. Oh, fuck because the Because sometimes I do want to kill myself, so it would be really easy for them to get away with it. Yeah, I understand. But, uh, yeah, dude, the, the government, the CIA, they made a video, a fake terrorist threat video of ISIS. Um, and they had a, it was a quick time video that had a, a file embedded in it that was basically a tracker. So everyone who watched the video, they could tell where their computer was. Damn. So that's debunked. That's been debunked. Like it has been. I mean, that's <laughs> been verified. Can't be debunked. It's it, been verified. Man, that's crazy, bro. So the I mean, I, so I, I'm of the camp that 9/11 was an inside job. It's uh, crazy the, that the, I just the, used the wrong word this early on. I shouldn't have smoked that. <laughs> Monkey Mouth Studios, boy, having a good time in here. At least I ain't got you drunk as fuck. We do have whiskey. Oh, um, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely not drinking. I understand. I haven't drank in months. Good. That's good, man. Whiskey's, uh, alcohol's bad for you, bro. It's literally poison. Yeah, yeah. I, it took me a lot of mushrooms to get there, but I finally convinced myself I don't need alcohol to be happy. Bro, I'm, that's good. I'm very, very proud of you. Um, but I'm convinced that my mushroom circuit is broken. Like it just doesn't do anything anymore because you've exhausted it? Uh, no. I just think that, uh... I don't know if my, like, chemistry is wrong or what, but, like, I have never had, like, a really, really dope mushroom experience. And the last time I did it, I took seven grams. And my friends took, like, one took two grams and one took three and a half, and they were both like, oh, this is great. This is, like, these are pretty good mushrooms. And I'm over here, like, on seven grams, like, when's it gonna hit? And the other night, I literally went and saw Joe Rogan uh, at the Vulcan, which was fucking super dope. Nothing but bangers, bro. Nothing but bangers over at the Vulcan whenever Joe shows up. But, um... Uh, shout out living the blessed life in Austin, man. Uh, getting access to that type of quality comedy. But he was describing how, like, you can hear mushrooms, like, coming, like, and, like, it washes over you, and, like, you get these, like... That's what Terrence McKenna says, too. I've never related to how Terrence McKenna explains the feeling of psychedelics, because he says that he prefers mushrooms because they have a hallucinogenic effect, and he likes seeing things, and he doesn't like acid because it makes him too introspective. But I feel the opposite. I like acid way more because... I hallucinate on it. Mushrooms, I too, uh, I love mushrooms. I'll, but when I when I take mushrooms, I have a really good time. I'm happy. I'm more grateful. I'm more empathetic. I'm a better person. But you're not having like... But I'm not having deep trips. Yeah, you're not having like uncontrollable visual and audio hallucinations. No, I've never... So, I've, I've seen a city being built out of lights with trains and little streets and planes is, is on like, acid. Yeah. I saw this. I have the memory. I saw. I, I physically saw it. Yeah. I knew it wasn't real, but I was watching it happen. Well, so I think it's real. I think that we live in a, in, a, in a universe that's infinite. And I think that there's nothing that your mind's eye can see that doesn't exist somewhere within the infinite multiplicity of simultaneously existing realities. I believe that every time we see something in our mind's eye, that's not something that like impresses upon us. The thing that makes us, us, goes out into the fifth dimension and looks around. And you went to a place in space and time that actually is accessible to you here now. And looked at it. And that's how you have that memory. Yeah, I agree. Um, the CIA also has a... Have you heard of the Gateway Project? Uh, I mean, no. Not familiar. Long story short, uh, astral like, projecting yeah, like remote is real. Viewing, remote, remote viewing. viewing. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, they... it's playing binaural beats. Headphones, two different... Uh, 
frequencies that make one harmonious frequency in your while mind. you meditate. But yeah, but they have to be in headphones, so you can't like play with. Speakers. Yeah, yeah, I understand because because you have one wavelength coming in from one side and one wavelength coming in from the other side, and those two, whenever you add them together, equal a particular wavelength. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then you meditate, and then you're able to astral project. I have not tried this. I keep forgetting to. I do have headphones and the link to the binaural beats or whatever. Yeah, I've uh, I was listening to binaural beats a long time ago. There's some stuff called Sonicade. You ever came across Sonicade? No. So they have. Uh, I mean, this was this was six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, whenever I was seeing this on YouTube, where they have these entire albums put out, where it's binaural beats that are like music, though it's actual music, and they have binaural beats uh, infused into it, and they're meant to uh, create like uh, different feelings. Like they all have like different titles, and like they're meant to like over the course of like fifty minutes, like create different particular types of feelings in, in the human in the human body. Oh, dude. Idozer, or Idozer, unfamiliar. I dash d o s e r dot com. Back when we were on Windows ninety five, these uh, it, it was that stuff. But each different song was the name of a drug. Nice. It's like play this, and you'll feel like marijuana, and yeah. then cocaine, and ecstasy, whatever. I don't remember what any of them sounded like, so I can't tell you how accurate they were, but. I do remember that existed. I did listen to that. You know what? What uh, your comment about having different binaural beats creating different types of like psychedelic relations in your mind um, reminds me of a yet again a thing that Terrence McKenna said. Which, if anybody doesn't know who Terrence McKenna is, y'all need to look him up. He's like one of the godfathers of fucking psychedelic philosophy. He's one of the major proponents of the stoned ape theory. He's like the creator. A, yeah, yeah, he's the creator of it, yeah, and he's, like, obviously the person who pushed it the hardest, and so he's, like, that dude, like, he's he's that guy. If you're interested in getting into psychedelics and under and having, like, a, a place to start looking to put your nose so that you can understand what's happening here, that's, like, a really, really great resource. Anything that has Terrence yeah, McKenna's dude, name on it. Yeah, dude, I have spent at least 40 hours listening to Terrence McKenna talk. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen, like, I would like to say every, like, pretty much every recording of that human in existence. Like, I've, I've, uh, I've listened to a lot of it. Um, and uh, so the thing I was saying is that um, your comment about the binaural beats um, having these psychedelic relations reminds me of whenever Terrence McKenna said that if he takes a high enough dose of mushrooms, he can make the mushrooms feel like any other type of psychedelic if he mm -hmm. wanted to. Um, and so I've definitely never gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. I would love to get so high on mushrooms that I could be like, all is right. Is that light supposed to be on? Uh, it's just dim. This one's, this one's having trouble right now, and that's why we have them pointed at one another instead of at, instead of at one another. Uh, because if we were, if, if like I was speaking into this one and you were speaking into that one, this one would be much quieter. And that's a recent development. And so we're about to upgrade our equipment all around. Um, but so now we're just speaking into this general space, and it, it creates a it creates a good recording on the back end. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be just nice. I just I, I always worry when I podcast that I'm not actually recording. Yeah, well, so that's why I literally have this up right here. Like, there's like I see we're seven fifty or seven minutes fifty seconds in. We're here, and so I actually dropped my logo right here. Right here is gonna be my logo instead of it just like beaming back at people. Like that's kind of an ugly scene right there. So I just kind of dropped my logo right there. Maybe that's shitty production, but whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you should. I don't. Why? Uh, because I'm doing this for me, and like that's the way it like serves me. And like if some potential viewer doesn't watch it because I fucking dropped my logo right there, then like fuck them. You know, like love them all to death. I'm no, I'd say everybody, but like meh. I'd say you should get a ring light right here. Yeah, oh yeah, we're definitely going to be upgrading our lighting. That's like a guarantee. Yeah, yeah it's just... So, uh, maybe you don't know uh, about me. Uh, I had a studio built out in my warehouse uh, for Radix, my uh, nationwide cannabis company. And it got destroyed in the tornadoes that came through recently. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, to make a long story short, I didn't get paid out on the insurance for that either. Um, Damn, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, we got nothing. And so uh, I lost it all. And so I had to come back and build this out from scratch with like a little bit of cash that I had left over after re-upping on product and getting into a new space and all that. And so it's a, it's a little lackluster, right? Like the camera isn't as good as it'd like to be. The mics aren't as good as I'd like it to be. Um, you know, I don't have as much RAM crammed in this computer as I'd like for there to be. I don't have lightings like I'd like it. You know what I'm saying? There's some, some obvious shortcomings in my mind, but... Um, 
I'm definitely like going to keep moving in a positive direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to not do it because it isn't perfect. Like just because, uh, there's a, there's a saying, uh, just, if, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. I don't understand that. So like, I understood everything else you said. So I would rather do this right now poorly than not do it at all. Oh, me too. I'm the same way. Yeah. Well, so, you, so it relates. Right? Yeah, like, absolutely. I didn't know about that story either. You know what? I, I'm gonna say. Um, what you told me about brushing teeth—that still sticks. With yeah. Me. Well, I mean, it's so the the story is actually uh, it, it relates to brushing. Like the the way that this was told to me was about brushing teeth. Um, that's how I was told. Like, man, if like it doesn't matter. Like, because I would sometimes I wouldn't want to brush them because I was I didn't have you know three minutes to sit there and like brush them really good. And someone was like, bro, if it's worth doing, do it poorly. Like, get a quick brush in, rinse your mouth out. Like, it's better than nothing, right? And like, even if you don't get to like itch the perfectionist scratch in your brain, you don't don't not do things that need to get done because you don't have the time or availability to like do it the way that it can look perfectly in your mind's eye. Like, yeah, do I, used, it now. I used to have a podcast called Giggle Boys on the Drinking Bros Network. I got canceled from it because I was talking shit about police. Yeah, fuck the police. And uh, I would always say that to my co-host Mike Eden because he was always like. We have to do everything perfect and make it right. And Man, I like, love the police. I love everybody, right? But like, there's some, there's some. We need some fucking reform badly. And I'm just like, dude, just get something out there. <laughs> and uh, he's finally putting shit out. So good. But yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, but what that. you're saying about <clears throat> the fact that you totally got fucked in life? Um, no, 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 no. I didn't get fucked. Like I, I never said that. I just some shit happened. But like, you know what? At the end of the day, bro, it's hard for me to feel anything other than grateful for being alive. You know, I could have been up there working on that Monday. You know what I'm saying? I could have been there and gotten pancakes. So, like, I'm just like, ah, cool. Like, I fucking totally cheated death really fucking hard that day. Yeah, yeah. I, it's kind of like, there's a lot of ways I want to say this. I guess I'm going to start with, uh, I would rather have a bad thing happen to me than nothing happen to me. Because I can do something. I can react to a bad thing. Sure. Uh, if nothing happens, I, I can't do something with nothing. So yeah. I would prefer chaos over stagnancy. Yeah. And I think, you know, if That's you can, fighting. did you used to be poor? I'm still poor, my dude. <laughs> like, are you, you, you have a nationwide cannabis company. Yeah. Just because you can make a couple million dollars in revenue and not be like where you need to be personally. Like you're, yeah, there's, there's, That's a, true. there's a whole like apparatus built around that organization that like gobbles up money. But I'm. I'm, I'm, I want to ask how much money you have, a I have no money. I have, I have like maybe four hundred dollars to my name. Really? Yeah. Were oh damn. And like no savings. Were you All right. So when I, in a social, social economic place that really affected you in a negative way. What's that now? I said, were you ever personally in a social economic place that affected you in a negative way? Yeah, you're black. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I, I grew up bathing in the river. Like I, I literally have memories of bathing in a river. All right. So then you know that when you're like. Like, w when I was homeless, that's when I was, like, working the hardest. Or that's when I was, like, the hungriest. Yeah. And when I got really successful, I got to a point where I was, like, I don't need to do anything. I have enough money to sit around and do nothing. And then I started getting, like, depressed and, like, started going crazy. And I was just, like, I needed, like, shit to do. And Buddy, you things, gotta, goals to chase. Yeah, man, you're. It's not a very fulfilling existence to just be sitting on your ass. No, like that, that's what I used to think I wanted to do when I was a kid. I was like, what I want to do with my life is nothing. I just want to lay in bed and watch TV all day. And you know what? I always like invite people to try that. <laughs> and then I realized that I was just really depressed when I was younger. Yeah. And now I don't ever want to fucking retire. I don't ever want to slow down or stop or like. People tell me to relax all the time, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna relax. I got fucking energy and. Energy is all we have in existence, really. So I'm just harnessing the power of the universe. Homie, we are a flash in the pan. If you have, if you're compelled to do something, fucking do it, my dude. Like, yeah. And if it and if it baffles other people, let it baffle them. Because you know what, those people are going to do things that baffle you. I mean, I everybody, literally everybody does their own thing in their own way, and like <laughs> you're just doing something different than what uh, the average person's doing, and it's blowing their mind. And I understand that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just. I think my thing is, is I'm just a, a confident weirdo. Like, but I'm not confident in the sense that, like, I think I'm the best at, at many things. But 
confident in the sense that I know everyone else isn't really shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you... what I Okay, so I had this experience where I went to boarding school as a kid. I got sent away for smoking weed and not listening to my parents. Take it a little further back. So I used to get in trouble all the time as a kid because I would never want to listen to authority. Like, my mom told me this, like, a few months ago. She was like, yeah, when you were, like, seven, I was like, Eli, da, da, da. she, like, yelled at me to do something. And I was like, mom, just because you're older than me doesn't mean you have, like, power over me. We're still equal legally as humans. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're seven years old. Yeah. And so that's always been my mindset about, like, all these teachers and authority figures trying to tell me what to do as a kid. I was always like, I'm not listening to any of you. No, I don't want to be any of you. Why would I listen to these people? Yeah. So I just have always been, like, following my own uh, intuition or drive or interest, really. I would, I would say interest, not intuition. Um, but then what was I saying to start with? Uh, you were getting in trouble while I was a kid. You got sent away for smoking weed. Sent away for smoking weed. And we had a therapeutic boarding school where there was group therapy three times a week. Super gay. And um, they would, like, encourage you to, like, scream and cry and, like, talk about yourself and stuff. I never did any of that shit. But I just... I would get away with... Uh, if you didn't participate, they would call you out. But I didn't... Uh, I, I managed to, to sneak by without talking about myself ever by just being really insightful to I was like well you know what that sounds like you have an issue with your mom or something and then people are like well yeah that's really smart Eli like yeah <laughs> no talking about me I contributed a day <laughs> no just cause they, it, they would leave me alone yeah yeah well so, so like they're, they're only yeah. going after people for not contributing not necessarily like you were able to skirt by not talking about yourself by contributing so I heard hundreds of different children around my age talking about their deepest, darkest secrets and fears and insecurities. And they were all worse than mine. <laughs> they were like, I was like, oh my God, like, I'm not that bad. Like, I'm, I'm fucked up, but like, Holy I could be shit. way worse. I don't have any of that shit going yeah, on. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So that's kind of why, well, that's part of the reason that gave me the confidence to, to do the shit I do. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know, I, so I like, I do stuff like, I'll put on a luchador mask and I'll do an actual jujitsu tournament in a cage. I've done that like three times. That's fun. I, uh, I've done a couple Muay Thai fights. I've competed in a handful of jujitsu matches. Uh, every Tuesday night, tonight, I'm going to be rapping at Latchkey. I have an album on Spotify that's, called I'm God. That's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the fuck out of that. I'm definitely going to have to go check that album out. Yeah, it's uh, what, Brody Lowballer. Brody Lowballer. That's, man, that's such a fun name. Uh, your, uh, your I Am God uh, album uh, made me think of uh, any time that I get caught. For some reason, it seems like now in Austin, the people who are like the, the, the equivalent of like the Jehovah's Witnesses these days, uh, they don't necessarily knock on your door, but they catch you in the street a lot, is Buddhists. They're always trying to hand out books on meditation and stuff. I haven't encountered that. Bro, it's happened to me at least four times. Fuck, I just realized I forgot something. That sucks. <laughs> Can you talk about it on air? What'd you forget? Uh, for Golden Cricket, I got a bunch of... So I cut up a bunch of little pieces of the protein bars. And then I got these little pouches with the design. They're, they look real clean and yellow. And the QR code on the back. And I sealed them all. So I can just hand them out to anyone. Yeah. So it's like a business card you can eat, and then you have the link right there. Yeah, I do, so, I do the same thing with, like, single gummies. Oh, really? Yes, absolutely. Fuck yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was a great idea. and uh, It is a great idea. I put a bunch in... It's uh, called running your, running your business like a drug dealer. If you give it away enough... <laughs> it, listen, if you give it away enough, people will come back if you got something they like. <laughs> you know, if you, gave, if you give away 10,000 and 500 people like that shit, they're going to come back and buy that shit. Yeah. 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 Shout, shout out shout out the book Rework. I read that book a while back and that was like the thing that really stuck out. It was like, ah, I already do that. <laughs> like, I already I mean, fucking I do that, guys. That. I've never heard of that book. Oh, it's, I mean, uh, I couldn't even tell you. I, I'm not like a big reader, but like, it was... I don't uh, know how to read. <laughs> yeah, right. I just fucking just feel the pages and hallucinate. Um, 
what was I saying? Talking about rework. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just like a book on like how to think about business in like unique ways. Like a bunch of like weird little perspectives on it from like some successful dudes. It's like meh. It's all right. It's worth a read if you're bored. <laughs> it's worth a read if you're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like. Yeah. Really. I mean, it there's works, a lot of shit it, that like it works for me. I'm mad at them. Like I have an, a very emotionally intelligent friend who hates Jordan Peterson because he think he says everything he says is obvious. I'm emotionally retarded, so when he says like, "Yeah, when you resent people, they don't like you or something," I'll be, I'm like, "Oh wow, I didn't know that." <laughs> I'm like, I, it's. I'm still trying to figure out how to talk to people. Uh, so you know what my trick is is to be absolutely selfish and say whatever the fuck occurs to me to say. And typically, I'm a good guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are like, well, how would you, like, not say some crazy shit? I was like, don't be a crazy motherfucker deep down. Like, you know, like, whatever. Like, whatever occurs to you, say that shit. Like, let your let your mouth say whatever it wants to say. Let your feet take you wherever they want to walk. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, be zen with it. Let yourself be yourself to the best of your ability because that's the most beautiful way to be. I want to tweak... The, the words of that real quick. For me, I, I think instead of... If, I don't think you should be yourself. I think you should be whoever you want to be. Yeah, yeah, well, so, I mean, that's that's like... Because yourself... You could... Dude, be yourself. I could be so many different people right now. Yeah, well, so... I could just... I could start talking like a Chinese person. But so the point is that whenever I don't want to be a Chinese person, yeah, nothing against Chinese people. I just that's not in my goals. But I want to be a billionaire, so I'm going to pretend like I am already. Sure, I mean, so I'm real big on like. Uh, that's why, dude. Lying is the key to success in a way. Sure, let's hear. I mean, you can definitely get there. Like the most powerful people in the world are the biggest liars. Sure, honest people are usually poor. Sure. Honest, good, hard-working people. Well, I mean, that's just a virtue of capitalism, dog. If you're getting to the top, it's because you're swindling. <laughs> you know? I mean... So... There's one... Lying, like, just... Like, if you say to yourself, like, No, I'm... I'm worthy of love, and I'm good enough, and, like, I'm happy, and... I love my life. It's like, you're lying. <laughs> That's, there's no way you think that. I mean... Yeah. But you got to lie to yourself until you eventually kind of believe that sometimes when you're having a good day. Well, so it's something about uh, the way you think influences the way you act. And the way you act influences the habits that you create. And the habits that you create influence the life that you lead. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And it all starts with where you're thinking. And like, you can interject anywhere in this. Like, you could, if you have bad thoughts, you could create a good habit that would lead to good actions that lead up to the actualization and the follow through of that habit that you create. And then, I've just been smoking weed. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's fine. Like, if, if like, to not have bad thoughts. Exactly, especially if your mental health is is in a rough place, or like, you know, you're talking about your mental health. Like, bro, like that shit's medicine, bro. Like, it's literally helping you be a be a like better more compassionate more forgiving and like more empathetic and sympathetic human being yeah. like it's it's no, here my, for my mental health is fine i'm not depressed at all it's totally reasonable it's that i want to kill myself sometimes dude what being alive realistically i'm just realistic realistically life is fucking tragic sure. default default your life by default you get shit out of a pussy you starve and you die yeah. That is what's guaranteed to happen to you. So everything past that is a bonus, and everything on the way is just fucking every, oh, you love someone? No, oh, they, then they break your heart. Oh, you have a bunch of money? Oh, you're going to lose all of it. Like, that just happens over and over, and you have to fucking be delusional to be like, no, this is this is good, and just focus on the... It, it, like, if you really scaled it out, it, life is way more negative than positive. But you can't think like that, <laughs> and I shouldn't have said that. And I'm oh. never going to say it again because I love life and I'm doing great. Well, so, I mean, it's it's true. Like, if you go and, like, look at what's happening to, like, 
chimpanzees, right? Like, like, like suspend, like suspend ourselves from thinking that like we're outside of the of the animal hierarchy, right? Let's talk about what life is like for every other sentient thing. You think that fucking chimpanzees don't have a, a will of their own and don't want to live and don't want to fucking continue their own life force in quite the same way as we do? They do, and yet they grow up in fucking groups of cannibals that will rip babies apart if they fucking piss off the alpha apes too much. I've literally seen a video of a, of a baby a, pissed off the alpha. Yeah, and the big alpha chimp went and ripped it in fucking half. My fucking dude, and so send me that video. <laughs> absolutely, it's on nature is metal. Uh, yeah, oh shit. yeah, follow that. Yeah, so I mean, it's real far enough back. Uh, I'm certain that's where I saw it. That would be. I would, I've got. I follow. I have a few follows like that, but it's like one of those videos that got shared around. And uh, but my the, friend sent me this video today. Uh, this guy beheaded his girlfriend in his hometown today. Jesus fucking Christ! What yeah, is wrong crazy. with that feller? The the <laughs> beheader or my friend. No, the beheader. I mean, I, I'm cool sharing it and talking about it, but like, my I'm not. Was just not... standing there. My friend was the one filming it. Oh, beautiful, neat. He was like, "Hey, I was held hostage. She told me to do it." And like, he was <laughs> chopping heads off that day, so I was like, didn't want to get my head chopped off, and I did exactly what the fuck he said when the fuck he said to do it, so that I wouldn't be the next beheadee. Dude, what do you think would happen if I went on Kill Tony and like held a hostage to come up with me on the stage and said? Let me let me do a minute, or I'll kill her. You, Bro. you think they'd be like, okay? <laughs> well, so I think it'd be funnier if you actually just went and got on Kill Tony and then fucking brought on a fake hostage. Um, you know what? It, you know, reminds me of a, there was a scene in just get on Kill Tony. Just make it sound so easy. I mean, it's such a pain in the ass waiting there, dude. Yeah, I know. I understand. I actually completely understand that. Um, been the last like three weeks, and every single time I've been like. This is gonna be my time. Not even believing that, huh? I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna say because <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, because if I if I were to go on, I, I was on Kill Tony once, like a few years ago, and before I, it really popped, it was in L.A. It was still pretty big back then, but I fucking crushed. Yeah, but they didn't have a secret show to invite me to. Uh, and then I started rapping so like I don't know I just feel like I, I could I would just handle it really well it's, it pisses me off to see all the people go up there and I'm like dude you know what they're gonna ask you have something prepared for that they, yeah he asks everyone the same exact questions yeah I mean yeah but at least, at least like a slightly varied form of it what do you do is always the first question. I haven't seen enough of it to know. I'm not in the cultural zeitgeist, bro. I literally take psychedelics and meditate in my bedroom. Huh. Yeah. So, like, I, like... You, you could talk to me about, like, the biggest that thing... That sounds kind of boring, though. I mean, it also sounds cool, but... No, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Like, yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, my eyes have seen things <laughs> that no one else has ever seen, man. Like is the face of God the flower of life? Uh, so, I mean, I think that all things are all things, right? Like, I think that uh, the face of God exists on every surface that can be imagined. I think base reality, though, is just a bunch of circles or spheres. You know what the flower of life shape is? Mm -hmm. So the most basic, uh, the, the most stable shape you can make of that in this dimension is a hexagon. Okay. If you connect the, all the intersecting points. This is a three-dimensional hexagon or just a flat two-dimensional hexagon? Two-dimensional. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's why, you know, hexagons are prevalent in, in chemistry. And yeah, well, that's like why you like... like snowflakes. Fucking beehive, cheetah prints. Beehives. Exactly. It's all over the place. It's mm -hmm. part of the geometry of life. Yeah, and then that, that same fra Fibonacci fractal like applies to... Every living thing, which, yeah, I mean, it's and like, and the, it applies to the Earth too. Certainly. So, the Earth is alive, certainly. which leads me to believe that other planets are conscious as well, and therefore, I don't think that the universe, the Big Bang happened. It was desolate and cold for billions of years, and then l bubbles turned into life, and then life evolved. 
No, dude. I, consciousness created the Big Bang. Or I don't know if I believe in the Big Bang. But consciousness created I matter. Definitely think We're creating ourselves right now. Our cells are divided. I definitely think there's a cosmic heartbeat. Yeah. I was having sex on acid once and that thrusting motion. I was like feeling, I was like waves of gravity. I literally know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, dude. There's, it's a pulse and it's like you hear it in music and you can feel it and... It's music a, is it's, crazy it's too. A, there's it's a metronome. That's the big thing is having a metronome. Like there's a cosmic metronome. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how we're able to tell time. If there wasn't a cosmic metronome, we wouldn't be able to measure and determine like lengths of time spent in places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was an alcoholic for like seven years because I didn't want to think about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to take a bunch of psychedelics and just dive in. Yeah. And the amount of knowledge I have amassed that is useless for everything except for this podcast is insane. Yeah. That's why I'm glad I got you on because I knew that we'd be able to like, this could go on for days. Yeah. Like, this could this could go on for days. Um, and so you, you mentioned something about the Big Bang earlier and how it happened, right? My thing is that it's 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 still happening. Like you've seen you've seen the images of like the measurable universe as we know it, right? It's like this like this amorphous cloud of like fucking universes or like galaxies and like, you know, it's just like eventually there's like an edge right we're like we can't measure anymore right like maybe our instrumentation isn't good enough or like that's just as far as we've been able to look so far but like at the end of the day there's like a cosmic highway we're like over here and then like it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it just eventually fades off into fucking void space right and like you can see it's like a it's like a it's like a mass what if there were multiple big bangs at the same time i mean certainly but my but the the point that i'm working towards is that you can imagine, like in your mind's eye, the whole of all the light that's contained in our universe right now, right? And like all these little bits of light. Well, if you just... I can't. You can or can't? I can't. Okay. I can't think that big. Okay, well, I mean... I can't even imagine the entire planet. Well, so... Also, well, so, let me, is they, they space literally, real? <laughs> I mean, there's certainly something that's between you and me, but... Um, I mean, really, literally have images of it where they've gone out and like as far as like that was so profound. I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> I have no idea what I just said. I had to pause and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> I literally have no idea what I just said. Like, like I hope that someone hears this on the podcast. I said, like, "I said, do you think space is fake?" And you're like, "I mean, there's something between us." And I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> but no, there's air between us. Air is real. Space, shit. bro. Okay, I. I'm not a flat earther Listen, at all. I, I want to finish my thought on the big Sorry, thing. go. But we'll get on the flat earth tangent. But the point is that if you can, like, imagine, like, we're in the center of something and we're measuring out and eventually we get to the limit of what we can measure, right? There's, like, this semi-symmetrical shape of fucking galaxies and stuff that we can measure, right? And if you were to just zoom far enough out from that, all that would be one point source of light. Like, everything that we are, if you far enough out that way is measurably, determinably the big, thing, the big Bang as we measured it in the past. You feel me? No. I got it, and then I lost you. Listen, the point... I can imagine all of the light on Earth from far away. Listen, bro. If you can imagine everything that there ever is, ever, from far enough out that it can be... Like, what the, point, what the, what the Big Bang looked like before it happened? That's us from 100 quadrillion light years that way. Like, if, if, I swear to God, if you just went 100 quadrillion light years that way and looked right back into the center of mass of this thing that we're experiencing, it would just be one point source of light, my dude. And that's us literally right now. Like, from their perspective, they can measure and be like, wow, look at that explosion happening. But that's us right now, my dude. We're in the Big Bang, actively happening, my dude. It's like someone threw a fucking bottle of ink out of fucking canvas, smack, right? And, like, there's the big center part of it, right? And that's like... With the bottom's still running. No, I mean, the bottom line is that there's there's the, at the center, right, that's like the center of the universe, right, where like all the energy is tightly compressed, and then you get out to like the little dots that like aren't necessarily connected to the the big blob, right, on the Rorschach block, but those little dots that aren't connected are still part of the Rorschach block in its whole, it's still on the same canvas, bro, and like we are the like intricate little bits out on the fringes of the Rorschach blot that is the universe. 
And just because we feel as though what? we aren't connected because there's why no real space. Why don't measurable. you think we're in the center? Or closer to the center? Because we can measure the space between us. At the center, we'd be so tightly compressed, there'd be no there'd be no space. I mean, imagine like what it's like at the center of the black hole. Well, that's what it's like. Like that like at the end of the day, this is all a big helical model, right? Like everything's spinning around something that's spinning around something that's spinning around something, <coughs> spinning around something and eventually we get to like the prime nugget of gravity out there that like is the thing that everything's spinning around and like I'm certain that like in the center of that would be where we could measure as the determinable center. And okay, well, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. And I'm gonna say who tells us about space? I mean, NASA. Yeah, scientists. NASA. Sure. Who started NASA? Nazis. In Operation Paperclip. The government, yeah. Who trusts the government? Nobody. I don't I mean, trust the government. I don't understand what... Our parents trust the government. Boomers trust the government. People who fucking... Because gravity isn't even proven. Like, there's a lot of evidence for it, but it's still, like, could be disproven. But it's there's a lot more evidence to support that electromagnetic force is the strongest force in the universe. Like, what holds uh, atoms together. Sure. Yeah. So, we could be on a flat realm that's an electromagnet, and... Um, I don't know, the screen's just a fucking... I mean, the sky's just a screen. I've definitely felt that way. It's like a big a big fucking... Truman Show? Yeah, exactly. Well, and so, uh, you know, I like the I like the, the life as a simulation uh, idea, right? Like, Well, it is a hologram. That's been proven. Yeah, I mean, they've pretty much determined that. But the double like, slit experiment. Well, I don't know if the double slit experiment necessarily determines that it's a hologram. I think well, I think it determines I think that it's made of waves... That matter is made of waves, and well, waves are light, so therefore yeah, so we're made of light, I therefore mean, we're I a mean, hologram. I mean, definitely at the end of the day, everything is just photonic energy bouncing around, bro. That's the definition of a hologram. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, but I'm not I'm not prepared. I don't, I don't necessarily like going, double slot experiment, therefore life is hologram. Like, there's a fucking few steps in the chain that I feel like need to be addressed between here and there, but... I like to jump to it. I mean, it's fun, right? And like, and so here's the here's here's the truthiest truth that I can orient myself towards on all this. The real truth of the matter is going to be way weirder than you and I can put our fingers on. Like right now, we're all just like, ooh 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 ooh, pointed at a thing in the center of, and like we like oriented towards truth, but there's no really getting there with monkey words, bro. Like have, we're, have you seen everything everywhere all at once? Uh, I would like to say that I have, but I think that that would be pretty small-minded to me to say factually yes. Like, I think that I've seen everything that I can conceive the, of. The, the movie. That's the name of a movie. Oh, no, definitely not. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I don't watch movies. I go to my bedroom and meditate on psychedelics. How long, I, for how long? My whole life. No, how many hours in a day? Fucking when I get home to when I go to sleep. Like, I'm fucking in my bedroom. Like sometimes I put on some TV. You have no like, desire to watch a movie? I think you should watch this movie. It's very cool. Or you want... I can just explain no, it like, to I, you. I'm down to watch the movie, and I'm down to hear your explanation, but, like... You, you want me to you, spoil it? Sure. But, like, you, you can't you can't expect me to know these references moving into this, because I don't... Right. Like, I'm going to keep forgetting. Bro, I'm a fucking husk. <laughs> like... You ever I, seen Happy Gilmore? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We found right. some, com some common ground. I grew up <laughs> so, poor, bro. I grew up poor, so, like, there's that. Yeah, we're fucking we're 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 building bridges, man. We're building bridges. But so, uh, to answer your question, no, I haven't seen that particular film. <laughs> I haven't seen everything, everywhere, every time. No, uh, it's it's cool, man. It's uh, these people have these earpieces that can. Tr I still don't even get it. It's kind of like the Matrix, but not as complicated. Basically, these people can transfer their consciousness, consciousnesses into other versions of themselves in another universe. Neat. And, uh, but to activate the way, the ability to do that, they have to do something very unexpected to, like, change the odds of something Neat. Yeah. happening. Yeah. And there's, like... They have to throw themselves into an obscure timeline. The, the first scene, they're, they're getting audited by the IRS, and... Her husband, it's a small Chinese lady in her family, and the husband is like, you can see his like face change. He's like, Phew. you have to listen to me. You have to go to. Da, 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 da. I'm not gonna remember this conversation. Just all right. Oh hey honey, you know what I mean. He just like switches characters, 
And then she's like, what the fuck just happened? And she's like ignoring it. And then uh, it gets to the point where it's like too late. And she like punches a lady in the face. And then the security guards surround him. And then the dude just pulls out a chapstick thing and like slowly makes it all long. And then he just eats it and starts chewing it. And that will presses work. this button. He yeah, has that'll, these that'll, earpieces in. You. And then he fucking travels to another consciousness. He learns martial arts from a version of him that learned martial arts, comes back into his body, and just beats the shit out of all these guys. Oh, shit, so you can go experience periods of time in that other reality and then pop back into the one you're in from the moment that you popped out? Oh, yeah. that's OP. You can gather all that's of your OP. other people's. Bro, that's OP. If I could just... I'm telling you right now, if I could go and gather all the experience in an instant from all the other Joshes that have ever existed... Oh, I could be Joshimus Prime, bro? Like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, yeah. that's... That's an OP skill, bro. That's definitely like overpowered. That's and definitely then, like you're gonna you're gonna take over the world really quickly. And then there's one scene. Actually, I, you can't give me that power. You can't. Like I'm too irresponsible. I know for a fact. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, bro. If uh, again, if you can imagine something like those dudes who made that movie imagine okay, that okay, shit. Okay. 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 Fair enough. That's possible somewhere, bro. I swear. I fucking. I bet my fucking left nut on it. So my very first revelation on psychedelics was LSD. I was uh, 19, 18, 19. Uh, that was when I saw the light. What a dork. City. What a dork. <laughs> <laughs> fucking that young taking high doses of psychedelics. Shouldn't let your brain develop. I was too young? I don't know. I just like to talk shit. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if I'm retarded. Was it, was it beneficial for you? <laughs> If it was beneficial for you, then it was the right time. It was definitely beneficial. Then it was the right time. My, my first my, uh, my my first epiphany on psychedelics ever, I was like, <clears throat> everything that has ever existed and will exist, exists right now, infinitely on repeat in different areas of the universe. And our consciousness bounces around like an electron in an atom where there's a probability cloud, but you don't know where exactly the electron's at. So we're just like connecting all these moments together. That's why you get deja vu. That's why you fucking feel, that's why sometimes people disassociate and feel like they can't recognize decisions they made yesterday. Bro, yeah. But isn't it crazy that all these thoughts I had on drugs, I ended up researching later to be true? Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing is that I mean, truth is there on its own. You don't need to be taught by somebody. Like, it, you can only be shown something that's already understood internally, bro. Like, all like, like, bro. Imagine that the universe is like a big computer, and it's got a big solid state drive, and we're just like programs. Yeah, I'm not right? a flat earther. I'm a computer server earther. Sure, <laughs> but like, but like, imagine like we're just like programs, right? And so like every single bit of information that we gather as individuals gets stored on the solid state drive and we originate from the sort from the solid state drive like we're just programs that are like being run from the solid state drive and so we are really the solid state drive and that's uh, it's like uh, there's a quote so from, we're so you're basically saying we're a hologram what i'm trying to say is, is that, that Center well, of the universe is a computer, and it's projecting I'm not, light. I'm, I'm not saying that's actually the case. I'm just that's what I think. I uh, haven't thought that before, but this conversation makes me think that now. What I'm trying to say is that there's definitely uh, the 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 universe uh, has a like a universal consciousness that's aware of itself, and it's aware of us as and and and, 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 and it experiences through us. There's an Alan Watts quote that says, we are apertures through which the universe is looking through and exploring itself. And that's, that's like if a bunch of MacBook Pros were all connected to the internet and had their webcams all, on. Yeah, had their webcams on. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're yeah, that's that's a problem. And they were all on Omegle. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. That's, that's, a probably, that's like a probably an appropriate uh, simile to be really, to be really uh, frank about it. Um, we're definitely, in my opinion, apertures through which the universe is looking through itself. They were just antennas. That's why a lot of the time, uh, I don't really uh, give myself a lot of credit with ideas and stuff because I'm just like, oh, my avatar just downloaded this. Yeah. Like I don't really think about it like it's me. It's just like I'm just playing this character. Yeah. So in quite the same way as like those little uh, bits of like fun creative stuff are accessible, kind of through. I mean, bro. Like uh, I think uh, I can't remember the name of the. There was a, a really really famous. Um, 
can't, like a composer who uh, always said that he knew not where his music came from. You know what I'm saying? Like he couldn't, he wouldn't even take credit for it. He's like, I, I, this comes from like somewhere above. And like the, the point Albert is, Einstein came up with the theory of relativity in a dream. I understand. Yeah, uh, exactly. Same and, with the guy who invented the entire periodic table of the elements. And so here's my thing is that it really bothers me whenever people in like philosophical communities try and go, well, it can't be like epistemologically measured and determined. Therefore, it can't be taken seriously. Right. Like it's, it doesn't it can't be arrived at reasonably. Right. Like why it doesn't doesn't fit within the frameworks of logic. It's not necessarily a reasonable argument. And like we and so they and so they completely discredit mystical experience. But I'll tell you right now, the theory of relativity happened in a dream. The fucking guy who figured out how DNA replicates itself meditated on LSD and watched it happen like fucking planets moving in front of him. Uh, and the guy, Rene Descartes, who's the father of the scientific method, which is the foremost tool of rationalism, was approached in a fucking meditative state whenever he was snowed in in a cabin in Germany. Bro, with no food and water, meditating, and he was approached by an angel and told him that, like, measurement and calculation and, like, repetition is going to be, like, the fucking trick to, like, conquering the universe in terms of understanding it and do it, getting out of it what you want. And, like, science was founded, bro. And fucking, <laughs> you know... And, Wait, like, what was he on? He was just meditating. He was fucking okay. snowed in in a cabin in right. Germany. But so the point is that, like, literally, the scientific method is something that's derivative from mystical experience. Like, literally, the foremost tools that we use as rationalists in the philosophical community these days are tools that we, like, drug out of mystical experience. And so I don't think that mystical experience should be entirely discredited. Uh, I think also, so. the, the periodic table of the elements guy. Yeah. So, see, that's incredible. I didn't know that. That's incredible. That's really, really dope. Um, and Tesla. Uh, well, so he wasn't taking psychedelics. He was just like a super. So he was he was really really spiritual. No, no, he no. Was, he said he said some shit like came to him in a dream. Yeah, yeah. Well, so a lot. Also, of the founder of AA quit drinking by taking LSD. I know, and he tried really hard to get uh, LSD worked into them steps, and they turned. They they wound up saying no. But like, <sighs> dude, that. That would change the fucking world if well, so, everyone in AA did acid. Well, well, that would so, be amazing. Well, so, bro, there's some, like, really, really promising stuff where, like, they're doing actual testing. I'm going to go to an AA meeting and be like, hey, you guys should all do acid. That's I, I don't necessarily know if that's the smartest or safest thing to do. It piss everyone off, but I think it would... <laughs> I Listen, probably shouldn't do that. No, I mean, like, here, like, if, if it, if it, if it is right for you then like you you've seen more like you you know you know you know what's right for you but the bottom line is is that um lsd will absolutely make you take a really really hard look at yourself in the mirror and show you like how the the negative habits that you have are negatively affecting yourself and the people around you and like it'll make it to where it's really really obvious like these are the things that you can do to make yourself better, and like you'll want to do that. Like it's a it's a hard chemical reset, and I definitely and, and like I said, they're doing real life studies on the benefit of uh, high dose LSD and uh, how it relates to addiction moving forward. And like they're seeing some really really promising stuff. But there's a lot of stuff like that, man. They're seeing uh, MDMA with PTSD. They're seeing a uh, 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 mescal uh, not a mescaline a. Uh, uh, high dose psilocybin and people in hospice situations, um, all kinds of like really, really awesome, beneficial. Uh, I mean, fucking ketamine for depression, bro. Like, there's so many neato fucking real life things that real life people are doing in legitimate ways these days with psychedelics help benefit people's mental health. And I definitely think that it's something that's good. The, the problem though is that the the side of the government that's backing legalization is also the same side trafficking children well so here's the thing the government is like an apparatus being controlled by a thousand guys on an island you feel me a thousand yeah tops 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 i would say like a hundred uh, if it's you know i guess you count their extended family somewhere between a hundred and a thousand probably closer to like five six hundred if i were being like really 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 fucking frank what island do you think it's not on the map. Why would they ever put it on the map? Like, why would they... Why would... Why? Why would they ever put it on the map? There's so many secret places in the world. Yeah. And, and, and they own... Wait, dude, this place and, is huge, and they, and they own them all. Have you traveled? 
Uh, not nearly enough. I, ever since I started, ever since I started owning my businesses, I've been able to move around a lot. But I've only been outside of America like once or twice. So it's I've I mean, and America's fucking big, bro. Like the United, U.S. of A. is fucking huge. A lot of shit to see in this bitch for show. Yeah, it's pretty unfathomable. I've I've been I've been to a lot of places. I've been all over the world. Yeah, and it is every single time I travel, I'm just amazed by how big the world is. Yeah. Like it's so big, I can't even. Like right now, I can, I can picture. A sky eyes view of like, downtown Austin. But then like zoom out, I I can think of the size of Texas, but like. I don't know. It's, I just can't think. Thinking of like traveling, on the ground. Like walking around the world, I just can't. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, the bottom line is it's massive. It's a, it's a it's a truly massive thing, and that we all that we all uh, exist on. And yeah, it's it's a it's a, like a really really impressive arrangement, bro. Like it really is. Like it's like I, I, I impressive I, arrangement. Yeah, like I like I literally like, we were for sure designed though. I believe in a creator. Sure. I mean, I just don't know who. I have no idea at all. I don't, and the Sumerian tablets. Did you have something to say? Because I'm going to dive in. Oh, I just I don't I don't know if there's necessarily like a clocker, like a clockmaker. I don't know if there's necessarily a guy who's like we're gonna fucking put these springs together and it's gonna make people like. I think that uh, there has to be, dude. This is too fucking complex. I mean, you know, and it works too well. I mean, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at the idea at all. You know what I'm saying? I just I just don't know if there's like a person who's like actually like got control of like the biological mechanisms that cause this stuff to happen but um it's certainly flattering right to think that we inhabit uh vessels that are so fucking complex and refined that like i mean bro yeah so you know what i always like to say how i know that there's a god and that there's someone who intelligently designed this to like be uh, a fun experience for us relieving our waste feels good like taking a piss feels great taking a shit feels great bro like fuck yeah, get that shit out of us, bro. Like literally, we are we we have mechanisms that produce waste, and it's such an intelligent design that literally the removal of those waste products is a fucking pleasurable act. I disagree. I do not like using the bathroom, and I'm ashamed of it every time I do. Really? Yeah. Really? Why? I, I they just think it's disgusting. <laughs> well, yeah, it's gross, but it, like objectively, it fucking feels. But taking a piss feels great. You're talking to the wrong guy. I'm just to let you know. I uh, I had to get surgery on my asshole because I had a tear in it from shitting too hard because my asshole was too tight. That is literally what the doctor told me. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a heck of a fucking ordeal. So yeah, maybe shitting doesn't necessarily feel the best for you. No, I, I went to the doctor because I screamed, screamed and cried for like five minutes after I took a shit one time. And I was like, okay, How old that's were you? <laughs> it's like six months ago. Oh my god! Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. Okay. God damn. Okay. Let's fucking go. Let's hear about <laughs> it. <laughs> so the doctor said my asshole was too tight because I'm super straight. <laughs> <laughs> like this is biologically straight as fuck. Or or just gotta... or really strong. I'll take either one. So you see a do not enter sign tattooed over your asshole, bro. Like like where a tramp stamp would go, just no entry. Dude, I have a tattoo of a Louis Vuitton monogram on my ball sack so I can tell girls I got him a designer bag. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. That's right up there with getting a, a, a rooster hanging by a noose on your calf so you can have a cock that hangs below your knees. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's way better. I also have a tattoo of a red flag. Like fucking... It's a red flag. This is a red flag. Just like a red rectangle? Yeah. No. Triangle flag. Like uh, Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft. I mean, Minesweeper. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I get what Remember the little flag in Minesweeper? Yeah, you got one of them. That's the little, little triangle flag. Yeah, I get what you're saying now. But you were going to talk about the Sumerian tablets, man. This is signed by Francis Ngannou. Oh, dude, his trainer coached a guest class at my gym the other day. How was that? I wasn't there. I fucking woke up at 1 p.m. What is that? Whiskey. Or is that whiskey? Yeah. This was a, 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 a gift from my brother. 
This is a. Uh, Can I look at the label? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a limited time. It's like a super rare bottle, super duper rare bottle. A smoke wagon. Yeah, I'm probably I'm only gonna open it with my brother. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've never seen that before. Yeah, well, so I'm a big, uh, like, Nightmare Before Christmas fan. Like, that's, like, literally my favorite movie ever. And so, like, it's got bone hands on it and shit, and it's whiskey. So, like, you, it's it's ticking all the boxes for your boy. That's what it comes <laughs> down to, man. Like, I'm going to fucking drink half this bottle and watch a whole bunch of Tim Burton movies. It's going to be great. Oh, man, drinking sounds fun. I miss it. But, uh... Don't do not do it. Don't let me be bad influence. Let's talk about the no, Sumerian tablets, I'm, I'm, bro. I'm literally not going to drink. I'm Sumerian not tempted tablets. to do it all. I have no desire. Tell me about these Sumerian tablets, bro. So the Sumerian tablets are the oldest written document known to man on planet Earth. And they contain the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, uh, Noah and the Great Flood, the uh, Tower of Babel. All these all these stories. That are like represented in other religions. Yes, they were originally in the Sumerian tablets. Yeah, dope. And the difference was, so in the Bible it says God said this. In the Sumerian tablets, it says the name of an individual. There were seven members of what was called the Anunnaki. And uh, some say it translates from heaven to earth, and some say it translates to son of Anu. Um... But some of them are depicted as reptilian. Um, also, if you depending, you could you could say that there's only seven races on Earth. Sure, I mean, I I have to think about that. I don't know, but like I'm down to roll with it. Yeah, there's but about seven races for on the Earth. Let's take a conversation, right? Like, let's let it roll. Yeah. So there was seven people, or not people, but they were. They were not gods, but they were definitely like they were superior to us. They were they were of like what someone back then would consider divine origin. Like they came from like outside the bubble. Yeah, like showed up here and like had fancy clothes and like could speak. Yeah, like when fucking um, uh, <laughs> Shakespeare wrote in on the Mayfair. <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about this, bro. I don't, like the, the Mayflower. When Columbus rolled up on the Mayflower. Well, so the Mayflower is what the fucking pilgrims. Yeah, from. yeah. And the Indians were like, whoa, these guys are gods. Well, well Christopher Columbus was them. way before the Mayflower. I thought he came in on the Mayflower. No, Christopher Columbus discovered the Mayflower. Uh, Christopher Columbus. Was, <laughs> oh, dude. Bro, so, Wait. So Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christopher Columbus discovered the United States, mistaking it for India. Uh, listen, I'm better with Sumerian history. And then, and then check it out, because fuck white people. White people are crazy. I have a fucking half Puerto Rican Dominican son because I need to get the crazy out of my fucking bloodline. Like, fucking second generation non-murderer. You're saying Puerto Ricans are less crazy? Absolutely. You're crazy. Bro, Puerto Ricans do not dominate the planet. Like, white people are insane. I'm second generation non murderer Yeah, dude, bro, you're right. Bro, my grandpa killed his dad with a 12 gauge. Like, <laughs> we come from, like, I'll come from a line of crazy son of a bitches, bro. So, like, all right, they're a little spicy. I'm cool with a little spicy, bro. Like, it's such a downgrade from, like, fucking nuclear waste. Like, I went from nuclear waste to, like, a spicy tamale. You know what I'm saying? Like, cool, bro. Like, Man, everyone's crazy, though. Yeah, just, like, I, I needed a different breed of crazy. Like, White people do have like an addiction to domination and it is ins- conquering. It is insane, and I'm happy that my son is getting it out of him. I can be he can be king of the goobacks for all I care. Like I don't give a flying fuck. We can all be. Like, is that a racist term? You haven't seen that episode of South Park. So my father made me watch South Park on the come up. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was dope. Uh, we had a good, we had a great time. My so dad, you've seen South Park, okay? Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. yeah. We're, we're like building bridges, man. Yeah. We're gonna get there, bro. <laughs> we're gonna fucking get there. I was thinking the other day how like most of our friendships are based around the kind of TV shows we watch. It, you know, it, it, it shapes your sense of humor and how you communicate. Well, and also like I think that like people with a general type of disposition are gonna like particular types of comedy, and so it's like, oh, you like that filthy shit? I like that filthy shit. That too. Let's be fucking filth gods, you know? It's what like I'm half saying? nature versus nurture. Well, what was I talking about with uh with uh, South Park, Goobacks. Oh, the Goobacks. Yeah. So, uh, so there's a scene whenever, like, people from the future start coming back in the past, like time traveling back, so that they can work for cheaper than everybody else. Oh so yeah, that, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. they can invest their money and like be rich in the future. 
And they, sit, they make a weird noise or something. Yeah, they all speak in like a weird hodgepodge language of all the other languages. And it's like everybody's a weird brown color. Everywhere speaks, everybody speaks this weird hodgepodge language and they're all goobacks because whenever they come across the border into our time, they get like goo on them. And so they're goobacks. And like, I'm cool with my son being King Gooback. Like, he can be like a weird person of Earth, right? What is your lineage? Like, I'm a fucking mutt, right? And I speak half Spanish, half English, what the fuck ever. Whatever, bro. As long as, like, we're all coming together, it's cool. That's that's what I want, man. I think that at the end of the day, we're all one big organism and that this whole universe is actually a big act of love and that at the end of the day, love is the truest answer that we can come to, right? Yeah. That's why I think terrible things exist because everything exists. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a saying. Well, there's a thing called mutual arising where if something's good something bad's going to happen. If there's something pleasurable, something displeasurable is there. Like, the the, the the existence of one creates the possibility of the other. It's just how it works. It's the bottom line. But the Muslims have a saying that says that in life only sunshine makes a desert. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, if you can equivocate... That's, that's kind of the same as too many cooks can spoil a turkey. Yeah. It's, so the, the point is that if you only have good, pleasant, sunny days... In your psychological landscape, your psychological landscape is going to be a barren desert. You have to have sadness. You have to have anger. You have to have downpours of rain in order for the ground to be fertile and for you to grow a beautiful psychological landscape, right? Like, you could have a rainforest. You can have a desert. You can have anything in, anywhere in between, right? And if you want to have only good experiences, you're going to have a fucking desert. And it's going to get to where, like, in order for you to feel anything, you've got to, like, hit the next high. And, like, you get addicted to just, like, trying to get any dopamine. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, my life is so awesome that I need something really good to happen every single day. Just, like, you, you know what you can do? <clears throat> Take your fucking shoes off. Go meditate under a fucking tree for an hour a day. An hour? Yes. That's too long. No, it's not. I got a lot of shit to do. Buddy, fuck that shit. You know? Like, you, what do you want? To fucking go achieve some shit, or you want to be fucking happy? I want to achieve shit. Well, then... I don't think I'm ever going to be happy. I'm, I've given up on that. Well, you know, don't say I didn't like the path. <laughs> you know? Like, don't say I didn't like the path. But, uh, at any rate... All right, if I ever come to you and I'm like, dude, I'm fucking struggling, just be like, hey, remember I said meditate? Try it this time. Yeah, like, go, I will. go find you a nice shade tree with your shoes off, sit to the ground, root yourself to the fucking Mother Earth, get some vitamin D, listen to the birds sing, breathe be here now everything will be just fine and with that that sounds nice actually yeah but whenever people say everything's gonna be okay I'm like no it's not why would anything ever be okay nothing's ever been no, okay because at the end of the day you're gonna fucking die and you're gonna reassimilate to the galactic <laughs> consciousness and everything's gonna be just fine people should say that then it's okay you're gonna die eventually that's where I'm at that's what I've been saying for years, dog. Welcome to the fucking ones who woke up. I'm at the point where I, I'm not... I don't fear death at all. I, I, I believe in reincarnation. Sure. But I, I terribly fear uh, discomfort and inconvenience. Sure. I mean, right? Anybody who's trying to, like, lead a comfortable life is going to be, like, averse to discomfort. I think that that's... I think that's a normal thing for, like, a person who's living comfortably. I feel like I've become less happy the older I've gotten, the more ambition and the more goals I've had. When I was younger, I didn't really get the, the the kick to start really applying myself. I mean, I was always trying to get money, but as far as like leading a positive life and creating generational wealth and making an impact, didn't really hit me until I was like 24 to 26. Yeah, well, so, uh, you know, that's, uh, I don't know if those are necessarily like creating generational wealth and having an impact or all like... Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Like we're it's like, really like when they say like, you, you, don't chase girls, you, you, chase your money, and chase your business. You, honestly, you'd probably be better off just like marrying the first girl you meet when you're in like seventh grade. You, you know what my two cents to you is is that you need to worry about you need to think about what it's going to be like whenever everything that you've ever done, everything that you've ever loved, and everything that you're ever going to try and build for is eventually going to be turned to dust. Well, I, that's why I just want to help people well, so around me. I want to support everyone around all, all, me. And listen, all the help that you're going to, all that positive shit you're going to do, it's all going to turn to dust. And you got to find a way to be okay with that. And once you can get okay... Oh, yeah, I don't care what happens after I die. I'll well, be so, dead. Well, so, then what's the fucking issue here? You know what I'm saying? Everything's just fine. 
Everything's just fine. Yeah, but it's so much fucking hard work to be successful. Then fuck it. So, again, my thing is, like, I, I view myself as generally successful, right? Like, I only have a few hundred dollars in the bank account, whatever, but, like, I've got businesses, I've got brands, I've got things that I'm working towards, right? But, like, at the end of the day, um, I'm taking it at my own pace and doing, like, what makes sense, when it makes sense, and I know that I'm going to get there when I'm going to get there. I think that a lot of people uh, try really hard to, like, control every variable, right? Like, there's a there's a million things happening, and I need to control them all so that we can, so that I can, like, it's like being a rock, right? You're, like, going to rigidly maintain your position so that you can inch forward the ways that you feel like you need to. Yeah, that's totally how I operate. I don't do that. I operate <laughs> like water, my dude. I understand that there's an infinite number of variables that I can't necessarily control, like tornadoes knocking down my fucking warehouse. Yeah. Right? And then I identify the path of least resistance and all that energy. If that shit happened to me, by the way, I wouldn't be like, fuck. I would just be like, well, and then I would immediately start planning. That's yeah. how I react to big deals. Yeah. I'm but very the, calm about it. But, the, the, but if someone, if I can't find parking, I fucking flip out. Yeah. I mean, so like my life could be on fire and everything's fine. But cut me off on the road and like the ape's going to come out. Like it's an issue, right? We, we all get caught up in the moment being monkey brain having motherfuckers. But I feel like I'm, my brain's like the opposite. Like it's difficult for me to understand simple things sometimes, like social courtesy in situations. I think I've gotten better at it now, but growing up it was difficult for me. But like when it came to creating a protein bar cricket business out of from scratch... I, it, it, I immediately knew everything I was going to do. Yeah. Like, it all hit me at once, and then it took me a few days to unpack it. And yeah. I just got, like, downloaded, dude. I think, I think like, the source consciousness, God wants me to grow this business. I mean, I mean there's a reason why the idea is beamed into your head. And, like, again, my big thing, and, and we, we're coming up on, we're over an hour, so we got to wrap this up. But I really do believe that the stuff that occurs to you internally and the stuff that, like, like, you know, bro, that, like getting these cricket bars in every gas station across the United States is going to be an incredibly beneficial thing for society and fulfilling for you. It would make right? me very happy. See what I'm saying? And like that, like that, that's where I like to reward myself with happiness after I accomplish goals. I don't think I'm scared that if I just allow myself to be happy without accomplishing anything, I won't need feel the need to accomplish anything else. And then I'll just be happy and just exist. So we mentioned this earlier in the podcast where you feel like you would love to just sit around and do nothing, right? But do you think, honestly, that the that the negative state of mind, the depression and stuff that you were experiencing back then is what got you off the couch? No, right? If you tried the same thing now, but with this same positive disposition and orientation, if you tried to sit on the couch, the same thing would happen, except you'd be oriented in this positive way. And so trust that you, you, you're not, you're never going to allow yourself to sit on that couch for an extended period of time. You can be fucking happy, bro. And you're Dude, not, I've literally sat in bed for like two days straight within the last month. Okay. So like you needed some days to like really uh, get you. And it makes me hate myself. Another thing is I don't trust the universe. I don't believe in trusting the universe. I think the universe wants the worst for me. I think the universe wants me to suffer and be poor and be miserable. Well, I think and I have to spend every day fighting the fucking universe for my life and for my freedom. Well, so, you know, here's the thing, is that you got to figure out a way to make it so that you're cool with being, like, uh, not necessarily there financially right here, right now, right? Like, I, like again, I got $400 in the bank account, bro, and I'm content as fuck, and I'm not, I'm not not moving in a positive direction, you know what I'm saying? Like, you better believe that, like, Monkey Mouth Studios is going to be a roaring dragon one day, uh, but I'm able to sit back and be comfortable on my couch and enjoy myself right now. And it's because I trust that I know that, like, I don't have it in me to just literally sit and do nothing and let life pass me by. And I don't think that, I don't, I don't think that, like, I think it's an appropriate fear and I think it's an appropriate motivating factor. But I believe that I know you well enough to, to, to stay confidently that, like, and I know that you, like, take Well, I've changed myself of, a lot. I've changed a lot. Yeah, but the, the point is that I, I don't believe that you should deny yourself happiness out of fear, Right. Um, like, like I said earlier, love is the answer to everything, right? And, like, I do believe that at every fork in the road, like, you know how the universe is infinite and it's, like, spinning off into, like, slightly variated forms of itself? The thing that creates a slightly variated form of the universe every other time is whenever a sentient being makes a decision, 
right? If a bug decides to fly off a limb or not, if you decide to fucking take this advice or not, like it's all, it's all every time that a sentient being makes any decision. There's a universe where I didn't do that finger snap. There's a universe where I did. There's a universe where I mentioned doing the finger snap. There's a universe where I did. And every single time that any little decision is made, it fucking splits. What if everyone just stopped doing everything? Well, that would be a big decision, right? We'd but all time be, slow. Well, I don't know. But the the, <laughs> the 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 point is, is that right now, you have an opportunity to make a decision out of love for yourself. You deserve to be happy, and you deserve to go and like be comfortable. And that's something that's an act of love for yourself. And right now, the way you've been operating is you've been operating out of fear. You're doing something because you're afraid of this other thing happening. And I'm telling you right now, bro, that, like, that's a lot of stress. It's a lot of anxiety. And I promise, bro, that, like, even if you don't necessarily achieve all these big goals that you have because you allowed yourself to be comfortable and happy and feel that love, at the end of the day... Yeah, at least I'd be happy. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm telling you, at the end of the day, bro, like, I've, I've had my heart weighed against the feather of truth in the hall of Anubis, and I remember it, bro. And I'm telling you, that if you make these decisions out of love for yourself, then at the end of this playthrough, you'll look back at what went down and you'll be fucking content, bro. And what more do you really want than to, like, expire and be able to look back and go, man, I led a good life. You know what I'm saying? And, like, what's going to be, a, what's, what, what's leading a good life is allowing yourself to be happy, not uh, being so drastically committed to achieving monetary goals and financial goals and stuff like that. Like, it's a good, healthy thing that you've got those motivations and stuff, but you definitely deserve to be able to allow yourself to be happy right here, right now. I 1000% believe that, and I also thoroughly do not believe that you have it in you to sit on the couch and let life pass you by because you've allowed yourself to be happy. I think that you've found a really elaborate way to rope yourself into being really, really motivated and conquering this world and getting the things out of it that you want. And I think that that's cool, right? And I'm not trying to be critical of you at all. And I think that like the light, like it's got you here. You know what I'm saying? It's so, like, it's working, right? But I'm here to tell you, buddy, that like you can absolutely allow yourself to feel that love and be comfortable. And I don't necessarily think that the that the the, the bugaboo bear that you're running from is going to get you. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I'm happy with how my life is going, and I love everything in my life, and I think my life is great. And I always used to say that the only problem in my life is that I'm the one in it. <laughs> that's fair. I think that I think a lot of people feel like uh, like alienated, right? But that's again because. Like, we're, we're all one big organism, bro. And we've gotten so far out in this experience that we're experiencing it separately. And I think that fucks with us. Like, I think that, I think it, I think it really irks us deep down that, like, we're not getting to, like, be one big organism per the average person. Like, I know I'm one big organism. I'm the galactic consciousness experiencing myself for the sake of my own entertainment. But the other people aren't, and that's where they're all discomfortable. Hey, uh, let's back up to the Sumerian tablets real quick. So, the story of Adam and Eve, Eden, the Garden of Eden is an outdoor laboratory where they genetically modified the first man named Adamu. Holy shit, neat. Yeah, Fuck dude. Yeah. That's one of the first stories in the oldest fucking writing on Earth. Fuck yeah, bro. We were made in test tubes, bro. I mean, it makes sense. It really does. And um, we were genetically altered again at the Tower of Babel when they capped our life at 120 years in the Bible. Uh, in real life, they genetically modified us by uh, adding telomeres to the second chromosome to reduce our lifespan from like... I don't know. We, we used to be able to live like a million years or something. Well, it's like what they said in the Bible. They said the disease in the Bible were living hundreds and thousands of years, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It makes sense. And, you know, they're figuring out a way to undo that. You know, they're, like, actively, like, working towards, like, making it to where telomeres aren't doing what they're doing to us anymore. Yeah, right? dude, get those telomeres off my second chromosome. I'm going to live forever. Yeah. But... Uh, at any rate, we got to wrap it up, man. It's been a super wonderful conversation. Yeah. I can't wait to do it again, bro. Uh, give yourself yeah, a shout out. Me. Yeah, give yourself a shout out to the camera, who you are, what you got going on, where they can find you on social media, anything. Like, literally, the, this is your soapbox for the next however long you want to run with it. Uh, my name is Eli Halpern. Please go to goldencricket.com and subscribe to my newsletter. It is my protein bar company. And uh, at Brody Lowballer is my raps. Brody Lowballer on YouTube. Huh. Um, there's more, man. I have so many. You're doing ones. comedy stuff, obviously, right? You're oh, yeah. I have a show on the 23rd at Wanderlust. See what I'm saying? So you're doing local comedy stuff. You're doing uh, cricket protein bars. And you're fucking... You're I'm doing, fighting you're, a guy in Houston on the 30th. You're doing mixed martial arts. Uh, what fight organization? It's a smoker. 
Okay. What does that mean? Uh, it's like an open mic for fighting. Got you. Cool. Super cool. Fuck yeah. That's fun, dude. You're going to go have some fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's neato. Uh, but at any rate, man, it's been a real pleasure. I'm glad you got to shut yourself out. I'm really glad you came on the podcast, dude. It's been a real yeah. pleasure, dude. Well, he'll do it again for sure. Hell yeah. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth.